Welcome to Mr. Marr History. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the Higher History exam, looking at how to answer how much questions. Let's look at some background information about these questions. How much questions are worth 10 marks? You will get one how much question in the Scottish section of the final exam, which is paper 2. The purpose of this question is to examine different views taken from two different sources about a single issue. Let's look at how you can get marks for this. As has been noted, how much questions are worth 10 marks? You can get up to 6 of these marks for giving relevant evidence taken from the sources, with a maximum of 3 marks taken from each source. One mark is available from the source in terms of summarising the source's overall opinion in terms of the question's topic. And you can get a further two marks from each source by giving quotes from that source and explaining how these link back to the question. You can also get up to six marks for giving relevant evidence from your own knowledge which is not included in either source. Obviously six and six adds up to twelve, so you don't need to give the full 6 marks in each part in order to get the full 10 marks. In terms of your answer layout options, you might choose to do the following. You can give 3 facts from source A, 3 facts from source B, and then 4 points from your own knowledge. Alternatively, you could give 2 from A, 2 from B, and 6 from your own knowledge. Or another combination, such as 1 or 2 from A, 3 from your own knowledge, 3 from B and 2 from your own knowledge. As long as there is a maximum of 6 for source facts and 6 from your own knowledge, you can get the 10 marks. One way to approach this is possibly to use the aid system to plan your answer. You can start by giving an answer to the overall question, discussing the fact that the sources disagree about the topic. You can then include facts from the source and show how they are relevant. This is a maximum of 6, free per source. And you can talk about what the sources don't include, and you can make up to six of these points. In terms of quoting from sources, this is the best approach. Make sure that when you quote, you explain exactly why the quote is relevant to answering the question. The quote on its own is not enough. One way to do this is by giving the relevant quote and then showing what this proves, in terms of the overall question. For instance, source A says, and give the quote, this shows that, and explain how this relates back to the overall question. Let's look at an example question now. This is drawn from the migration and empire topic. In a how much question, you will get a fact from source A, with lots of details and information, and then you will get a second source, in this case source B, with lots of information. Both sources are on the same theme, but will have different views and opinions. The question appears at the bottom, and in this case it asks us to discuss the different interpretations of the economic impact in the countries to which Scots emigrated. All of your answers should relate back to this point. We start off on the aid system by answering the question. In this case, we would identify that sources A and B disagree about the economic success of Scots in their new lands. We then, under the I of aid, look at what the sources include. We start off by summarising source A's overall opinion, which in this case is that Scots were successful economically. After this, we then identify a quote and explain what this proves in terms of Scots and the economy, and we use a second quote and give that a similar explanation. Looking here, we can see not only the overall theme, but also where we found the different sources. We then move on as part of our includes to look at source B. Again we summarise the overall opinion, which in this case is that Scots often struggle to find economic opportunities. We then give a quote and explanation which supports this, and we do this a second time. Again we can see reading it, it describes that Scots face some problems overall, and we can identify the specific quotes that we use to support this. Having done this, we would have six marks. We can now consider what the source doesn't include. We could give up to six points here, 
but as we already have 6 marks, we only need a further 4 to get our 10. We point out that the source misses some key facts, and then we go on to explain what they are. In this case, 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's important that we use real examples that link back to the specific question. Here is an overall answer, therefore. Let's remind ourselves what the summary answer is. We start off by answering the question, simply pointing out that there's disagreement about the issue identified in the question. We then consider what the sources include. We look at source A first, giving an overall summary and two quotes from the sources, and then we do the same for source B. Overall, this can give us up to six marks. Depending on how many marks we've given, we then consider what the sources don't include. We can get up to six marks here, and our aim is obviously to get the full 10. Higher history exam, how to answer how much questions. It's really that simple.